So the topic we've picked for today's episode is a cognitive bias that goes by the name outgroup homogeneity bias. I know it's a bit of a mouthful, but the way I like to remember it is well, they're all the same bias. I hope by the end of this episode, these words would make a lot more sense to you. Let's get into it. Hello, good people of the internet. Welcome to the Unlearning Playground, an everyday life podcast by Chetan Naram. Now, before we jump into the main content and talk about what we mean by outgroup homogeneity, let's first talk about what we mean by in-groups and outgroups. Because no matter how much we not like it, no matter how much we not appreciate it or accept it, we are by default parts of a lot of groups, right? For example, me being a man brought up in a Hindu household in India makes me a part of the in-groups men Indian and Hindu. And by the same token, the groups of Christians, um, Australians, South Africans and women are outgroups to me. So just in this regard, every single human being is a part of certain in-groups and is by default a member of the outgroup of some other group. And what the outgroup homogeneity effect means is essentially that the human mind likes to see or rather is biased to see a homogeneity in its outgroup, much more than its in-group. I mean, of course, we see homogeneity within our in-groups too. That is mostly why we choose certain in-groups, where we feel a sense of, let's say, belonging and recognition. But that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is a peculiar kind of a bias of our minds to find similarities and homogenize the outgroup much more than is even factual. You know, a very fascinating example of this bias comes to my mind right now. The example dates back a lot of years ago, and it was a particular city in the United States where there were a lot of crime incidents being reported and very similar ones at that. It was always that the victim was an Asian woman and she had her purse snatched by a young teenage black guy. And what was peculiar about these incidents was that every time the police would produce a lineup of Uh, potential usual suspects, the Asian woman was not able to recognize the snatcher and therefore the no one could be detained for it. Now what happened was eventually when one of these black guys was caught, he was asked why was why was their group targeting these similar Asian women? And his answer was very simple. He said that we knew that these Asian women cannot tell us apart from each other and therefore we would never get caught. Essentially, they didn't even have to wear a mask to snatch the purses from these Asian women. They knew that their face was mask enough. These women could not tell black guys from each other. This is how outgroup homogeneity works. And it's not telling on these Asian women. This is how the human mind works. Of course, these Asian women would have identified a black guy or or rather would have distinguished a black guy from a white guy or an Asian guy for that matter. But to tell different black guys from each other was almost impossible for them because their minds had homogenized that outgroup so much that it, it became nearly impossible for them to identify within that short period of time as to who that particular snatcher was. Isn't that just fascinating? Now, this particular example was kind of a more biological one because that's just how our minds work. But if you look at it, the outgroup homogeneity bias kind of turns up in our day-to-day lives as well. And it turns up in situations where we do not really think about it in this particular manner. For example, in a very recent conversation I was having with a client who was a woman, we were discussing about her relationships with men. And I'm sharing this only after having her consent. So please don't mind that. Yeah. So we were discussing her relationships with men and we discovered that her overarching narrative about guys was one that a lot of girls seem to have in this age, Mm, i.e. men are just pigs who are given so much privilege by the society that, you know, they don't really get to face issues remotely, even remotely close to what girls experience. Men, according to her, have it very easier compared to women. 
life is very easier for men in general while on the other hand women they face so many issues and when i probed her a little more and i asked her to describe these issues that women face that men don't she was able to come up with a lot of various kinds of examples because obviously that that is the case and she also acknowledged that each woman is on on her own path and therefore all the issues that she could be facing would also depend on her own unique life situation right but here's the catch she needed an extra push from me to actually realize that the same is true for men too i mean while it was really uncomfortable for her she did realize that it was her bias which was claiming that men's lives are much more homogeneous than women's lives and therefore a statement such as men have it easier than women was very easy to digest for her and here's where it gets really fascinating for me because i have had these conversations very similar conversations with the other side too men believing that women have it easier in their lives it is the same bias at play just from the other side and there are various other examples of this in our day to day lives too anywhere where you can draw a line and create a dichotomy and claim to be on one side versus the other you can always reach a situation where you fall prey to a bunch of these stereotypes i mean left leaning people homogenize right leaning people all the time and always call them delusional and similarly right leaning people homogenize left leaning people all the time and call them delusional too who is delusional i leave that to you you see stereotypes form a big part of our everyday thinking and as is very rightly said about them the problem with stereotypes is not really that they are untrue it's that they are incomplete so the real question to ask yourself is what incomplete stereotypes are your biases leading you to right now that is the work everyone needs to do on themselves firstly go within unlearn your own biases your own delusions your own stereotypes in the sense of becoming aware of them and then help others do the same what more do we have to do here anyway <laughs> well that's about it folks don't forget to share this episode within your respective in groups especially on social media the echo chambers we are creating in our feeds these days really need to be broken play your part in it and as always i'll see you in the next episode very soon new episodes come out every other friday so stay tuned Until next time peace up